All right, welcome to our first lecture, uh, Microsoft Word Basics. Some of you might find this a pretty easy unit, and that's fine. We are going to ramp things up. I just want to, uh, you know, ensure that we're all on the same page and all up to speed which, with what I consider the essential elements of Word. Uh, note, I'm using Office 2010. Some of you are using 2007. Um, but as I've said before, um, we should have enough in common that uh, there shouldn't be any difficulties. If there's something here that's thrown off feature-wise for you, let me know. Uh, and once again, I'm not going to go through every single button of Word uh, because some things I don't want to go into until later into the semester. First, let's just go into this little mini toolbar up in the corner. It's a, called a Quick Access Toolbar. You can save, you can undo typing, or you can redo typing. Hit this arrow, and there are other quick access features, putting in a table, printing, emailing a document. You can set that up however you want. I personally don't use it much. In the File tab, you've got ability to save, open and close a document, uh, start a new document, print a document. I think I don't need to go over that at all. Uh, you can adjust permissions and versions, uh, which again we're going to work with later in the, in the course. Uh, in the Home tab, you've got your clipboard. Uh, where you can do some formatting, you can paste. Also, if you hit this arrow right here, it'll show you, you uh, stuff that's in the clipboard. So if I type something and then I cut it, it shows up, the actual text shows up in the, in the uh, clipboard. I can paste it again. It'll still show up as having been recently clipped. Um, as a quick reference for copy and paste and cutting and pasting, Control X is for cut. Control C is for copy. That's where you you, you get the text, but it doesn't leave uh, its original location. And Control V is paste. Uh, those are three keyboard shortcuts if you don't want to use your mouse to mouse over. Uh, other relevant, another relevant shortcut uh, is uh, Control. S, that's your save file, and control P uh, for printing. Um, again, uh, you can use the mouse for those uh, through the graphical interface, but if you want some quick keyboard shortcuts, uh, those come in handy. Okay, anyway, uh, in the home tab is also where you're going to find your font effects. So you can here adjust what font you use, what size. You can also if you don't want to, if you don't really know, oh, do I want 36 or 48? I don't know. Uh, you can actually hit this button here to make your text progressively larger. Notice it going up in this box. Once you've thought, oh, this is great, or oh man, this is way too big, you can hit this button to make it drop. Totally uh, worthwhile. Here you can also adjust the case. You can put it in all caps. You can just capitalize one word, capitalize the first letter. Um, I personally don't mess with these buttons too much, but useful, f uh, useful for you. You can also, with this button, clear all your formatting, so it puts it back to where it was before. Here you can also bold, italicize, underline, strike through. Uh, generally, uh, I keep your um, fonts like that to, to a minimum. Uh, again, keyboard shortcuts here, Control-B for bold, con Control-I for italics, and Control-U for underline. Notice, do not actually type the plus sign in these keyboard shortcuts. That's just a uh, standard notation um, for indicating you hit the Control key and then the letter B, I, or U, or X, C, or V. Anyway. Um, You can also here highlight your text, a piece of text, and make it a superscript, or a subscript, or a superscript. You can turn that off. Here also, you can do some nifty effects, uh, change the background, or change the font color itself. Um, 
Again, uh, though, keep these uh, effects to a minimum. That's generally for the best. They should be used sparingly, if at all. Hit this window. You see a lot of other options, and what uh, a good thing you can do is set things <clears throat> as defaults. So for Microsoft Word, typically uh, everything uh, is naturally set at Times New Roman uh, 12. Uh, I went in and set my default font as Garamond. You hit this set as default but uh, button, and then you've got a new default that will be applied to the document next time. Um, in the Paragraph tab, I'm just going to run through a few of these things. Uh, let's see. Alignment. So this is this word is currently left aligned. That tab indicates left alignment. Here it's center. Here it's right aligned. Uh, this button here is called justified alignment. Um, and that's a little tough to demonstrate because um, we need about a paragraph of text. And, and it needs to run ragged. So I'm just going to type some gibberish here uh, because we need enough to go on a different line. So I'm not really concerned about any meaning. I'm just trying to get enough uh, words on the page to show uh, how alignment can look. So here you see this is left aligned and there's some raggedness between these two lines. They're not even. Justified alignment, it'll actually make it so everything lines up evenly on both ends. Notice also it can also mess around with kerning and spacing, so it's not always an ideal choice. It's something you may want to play with in your final book build, but you don't have to do it now. Just something to play with, keep in mind. You can also, from here, adjust your indents. You can make it farther to the right. You can send it back. That's totally fine. Uh, I, again, that's not a feature I mess too much with. Um, and once again, through here, uh, we're going to talk about a lot more about spacing and indents later. But just as a note, you can go and set up your features and set them as default. Um, in, you know, however you want. But again, we'll go into a lot more of this later. Uh, insert tab. Um, all of this here is going to be covered later in the semester. Uh, headers and footers are going to get a unit of their own because doing custom header, headers and footers and page numbers can actually be kind of confusing in Word. Uh, but so for now, uh, I do want to just show you real quick uh, that you can do auto headers and auto page numbers. So, um, uh, sorry, I ran a little too fast. I went into the header tab and I selected this header. So, lesson one, I'm just going to call that the header. That's, and that header is now going to be a designated header. It's going to stay on there. Uh, even if I go on to another page, at the top of every page, it'll stay. Let's do a footer, too. You just click the footer tab. Uh, lots of different options and styles. I tend not to use too many of these, um, but you know, they they can be worseful. Uh, they, they can be useful. So that footer is now going to stay there uh, through uh, the remainder of the document. Um, also, notice when we go over to these um, sections, it does. Um, Let's go with page number. Let's uh, go with something in the page margins. Where did that? And so we've inserted the page number down here. Uh, again, um, just something to mess around with, uh, get acquainted with. And you notice when you go into any of these instant auto headers or footers or page numbers, it takes you to a new section of header and footer tools. Um, again, you don't have to. You can play with that if you want, but we'll talk about it more later in the in the semester. One more quick thing in the insert section, I want to draw your attention to is inserting special characters. Um, so here's mine. You can see these are the characters I've used most recently. Uh, more symbols. Uh, this is pretty much a whole host of uh, really just cool or useful symbols. It's great for accent marks, um, for words in other languages. 
Uh, the M dash is a punctuation mark you may or may not have to use. Um, and for whatever reason, Word uh, inserts N dashes where M dashes should be, so that's a pretty handy tool to, you know, know where to find it easily. Um, you might not have to use this too much yet, but yeah, it's always nice to know where it is. All right. Uh, I'm actually going to close this clipboard because I personally don't like it and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> Um, so for the last little uh, little bit of today, um, we're just going to look at uh, auto margins. Once again, we're going to probably be working with custom margins later on. Uh, but here, just in this tab, you can go give yourself really small margins. Uh, give yourself some big margins. It sort of all depends on what your document needs. Again, uh, worth experimenting with. Um, I just have mine set at one inch all the way around. Orientation, it's highly unlikely we'll be using anything with landscape mode in this class, but now you know if you do need to change it, that's how you do landscape mode is often best for displaying specific charts that don't necessarily uh, work well in the uh, vertically oriented profile. Page size, I'm in standard 8.5 by 11. I can set it up to 8.5 by 14 for legal. Um, a4. Some of these changes are subtle and sort of difficult to register on the screen, but it's literally changing the size of the paper. This may come in handy for your book build. Um, and again, uh, we'll go into the how to customize this sort of thing later in the semester, but I want you to know where to find it and how to use it. Um, and we're all, I'll go into columns later. Um, And so for now, uh, those are uh, really the basic features of Word that I use pretty much on a daily basis. Uh, so these are the things I consider essential for you to be able to know. One last note, if you are confused and want Microsoft uh, to look at Microsoft Word documentation, you can hit this little circle with the question mark uh, in your screen. Um, so again, uh, this is just a summary of what I consider the very basics of Word. Uh, I'll have an assignment posted for you, and if you have any questions about this tutorial, do feel free to contact me. Thank you.